graphing transformations using mapping notation. Example 2, quadratic functions. Graph g of x equals to 0 0.5 f at open square bracket, 3 open round bracket, subtract 4, close round bracket, close square bracket, subtract 2, by transforming the base function f at x equals to x squared. So the steps involved are step 1, graph the base function using integer points. Don't try to use decimals. Step 2, we want to rewrite function notation as mapping notation so that we can transform the individual points we found in step 1. Step 3, we use mapping notation to find the image points. And then step 4, we graph these image points and then we label the new function. Step 1, graph the base function using integer points. I'm going to use the x-coordinates, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So naturally, the y-coordinates would be 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. And then we graph these points, and we connect them together into a smooth curve. Don't forget to label it. Steps 2 and 3. Rewrite function notation as mapping notation and find the image points. From the function notation, we can see that a is 0 0.5 or a half. 1 over k is 3, so k is 1 third. d is 4, and c is negative 2. Writing them as mapping notation, we have 1 third x plus 4, and a half y subtract 2. And then we transform each point according to the mapping notation. So a prime is now 10 over 3 and 0. b prime is 11 over 3 and negative 3 halves. c prime is 4 and negative 2. d prime is 13 over 3 and negative 3 halves. E prime is 14 over 3 and 0. We plot these points onto the grid and then we connect them as best as we could to form a very, very smooth curve. Don't forget to label Let's go back and start over the question. Let's graph this visually without generating a table of values, which is often time consuming. If you can master this technique, it will take you less than one minute to generate the image graph. So we start from the mapping notation. And then we take the points and do it visually. So we start from point A. We look at the distance from A to the y-axis. So right now we can see that it's two units long. We want one-third of that distance because one-third is our k. So this is one-third the distance from the y-axis towards A. And then we can draw a dot there. That's your horizontal compression. Now we need to apply the horizontal translation. We need to move four units to the right. Okay, so let's get rid of the extra lines so that it's easier to read. So this is one unit long, okay, and I need four units in total. So I'm going to attach this to the point, moving one unit. And then I have to do it three more times until I reach where I want to go. I'm not really calculating the numbers, but I am estimating how long one unit is on the graph itself. 
So I draw the dot. So this is the final position of A after the horizontal transformations. So now I need to transform the Y coordinate. I need to have a half of Y first. So right now we can see we can see that there is four units from the x-axis to the point. I want half of that distance. Okay, half of that. So bring the dot down to that half and get rid of the other dots because we don't need it anymore. So now we need to apply the translation. Okay, the vertical translation two units down, which means I end up on the x-axis itself. So there's my dot. Remember to label the point as A prime. Then we do the same thing to the other points. And we will have the same curve as when we did it using a table of values. What if we are supposed to find the equation of g of x? So let's look at that. Write an equation for g of x. Let's start from understanding how to substitute function notations. We are given that f of x is x squared, which is y. f at 3 is 3 squared, which is 9. We don't need 9 right now. f at x subtract 4 means we have x subtract 4 all squared. f at, with a square bracket, of 3 times bracket x minus 4, and then close the brackets, it means that we have that big bracket of everything squared. Now, we want to find the quadratic equation for g of x. So we replace the function part of the function notation with the equation part. And then we just need to simplify. So we expand to get 3 squared and x minus 4 all squared from the previous step. And then we multiply things together, simplify it, and we have our final equation. We usually write quadratic equations in vertex form. Notice that we are given a vertical compression by a factor of a half and a horizontal compression by a factor of one third. After simplifying, we find out that the combined vertical and horizontal compressions result in a vertical stretch by a factor of 9 over 2 or in decimal 4.5.